everybody, can you hear me? It's our 100,000 subscriber celebration. And it's all about training my puppy. It's, it's all about, it's, it's all about dog training today. And I'm not going to wear these devil horns. They're really for one of the dogs, but I don't have any devil dogs, so it's all good. So today is about teaching all of you as a way of thanking you. So we have 100,000 subscribers on our way to 1 million subscribers here on our, our YouTube channel. And I, I just want to, you know, raise the roof for all of you who have been a subscriber to our channel. And if you aren't a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, which this is the only place you can watch it, please hit the like button because that tells other people that this is worth watching. Now, I am trying to train my 17 week old puppy while I'm teaching you. So he is in the hot zone. We'll see how that goes. We have the backup um, crate if, if um, it's too much responsibility for him. I'd love for you to let me know where you're from and let me know if you've ever dressed your dog up in a costume before. Now, here's the thing about dressing dogs up with costumes is it's actually, if you do it right, it leads to functional behaviors that like a dog that is, oh, maybe his cookie fell back behind. A dog that can wear a costume is a dog that is okay with wearing a winter coat. In Canada, that's important. It's a dog that can wear a harness or maybe a, a surgical cone or maybe a surgical shirt after they've, they've been spayed. So there's, there's a lot of practical reasons why you should do what I'm going to share with you today in, the, in this live. I'm going to share how we get our dogs to not just tolerate, but really be accepting and, and really look forward to dress up time. All right. So can you turn that on for me, please, Linda? <laughs> Did you walk to a cobweb or something? <laughs> Linda just had one of these. Um, so we've got Sweden. I saw Brazil. I see New Zealand, uh, Michigan, New Jersey. Uh, looking, so yes, dressed my Airedale up when I was a kid. UK, McKinney, hey, Anne. Um, I haven't seen anyone, from, oh, one from, one from Quebec. We finally have a Canadian, woohoo! hoo um, South Carolina. So I think you guys are, I know that you are going to love this. Now, I'm going to share with you some podcasts that will be helpful for you as well. So podcast episode, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, podcast episode number 241. My team is going to put links here in, in the comment section. 241 will be a really good one for everybody because it gives you some of the things that you should be doing if you're in an environment where they you um, celebrate Halloween. And also what I've got going on here with... Mr. I'm thinking about leaving the hot zone. I've got, can you sit, Mr. Sit? Super good, cook. Right, nice. So I've got a big hot zone for him, a big area that he can hang out in. And we're gonna see how, I mean, this is huge for a 17 week old puppy to hold position up in an environment I might even help help my my cause out so make sure I can help him maybe be successful is if I give him something to do while he's up there now there is a chance because he has a dog nearby that he's going to want to go and hide that somewhere but I'll give him a little bed to go into can I have that my break good okay you can go in there you go so want a dog to stay in their hot zone a little longer with a little more confidence, then you can just give them a bone to chew. All right. And I've got another dog in a hot zone over here. Just waiting to show you how brilliant she is. Supergirl Dissy. And I have another dog waiting in the wings that you will get to meet. Put the comments who, who you think my next dog is that's going to be here with us today. Okay. So I'm going to switch this around because I want to make sure I can see any of your, if you guys have any questions or comments for me. So when, what we want to do is ha 
put, put things on our dogs. Like we might put, um, like I said, a harness on a dog. We might need to put a head halter on a dog, a, a cone for if, if they've had any surgery. Um, I use, I don't know if any of you have ever seen these. So there's a company called Rex Specs that makes goggles for dogs. And um, they also make these uh, ear protect protecting, um, I don't know what they're called, Rex Specs ears. I don't know. And so I got these for when I was flying my dog. So I'll just show you that all the things we're going to talk about today are going to help you to be able to do things functionally with your dog. So let's just go over here to Little Miss Black Beauty. If I can turn that around. There we go. All right. So this E, she, I, I've never actually um, ha put these on her other than for training. So, but you can see she recognizes them. She's not afraid of them and she'll push her face through. There we go. I'm going to help her with the last bit. Oops, there we go. So she can wear those because I've conditioned her to be okay with them without wanting to take them off. This is... And watch when I pull them off. Like pulling, pulling things off is often worse than putting them on. So those are the sorts of things that, um, you know, you, you may not. I, I was hoping that these would help dogs who are afraid of thunder. But in their, on their website, it doesn't give that claim. So um, mostly I got them for loud airplanes. All right. So a lot of the, th a lot of the people that kind of uh, bust your chops about about um, dressing your dog up, there's some really valid reasons why you would dress your dog up. Um, a muzzle, absolutely, there's a good one. So the one guess is for belief, one, two guesses, three guesses for tater, one for waggy. Oh my goodness, I think he just gave himself away. I don't know if you heard that, but um, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It is not belief. She's at home with Kim this weekend. All right, so getting a dog so that they are like this. Oh, I see that. You're, you're squishing my face and pulling my skin back and putting that on my ears. Yeah, I want that. And just to show you, I mean, I can do that again. I'll just put the camera on her again. Oops, I'm going to see if I can just, there, she's right there. I'll tighten that up. And so what we, how do we know that our dog is okay with it? Podcast, Shape My Dog podcast, episode number four. It was all about T-E-M-P, and, and I've mentioned it many, many times on the podcast as well. Can you sit? Thank you. So she offers to put her nose in that. If I move it over here, she's like, yeah, I want those on. There we go. Do you think that's fun for any dog to get on? No. Look at it. It doesn't look comfortable, does it? But she happily will put those on once, twice. It doesn't matter. And when I take them off, good girl. Get those big ears stuck in there. I keep dropping those cookies. So temp is important. Anything that we're going to do with our dogs, dressing them up for Halloween or getting them ready for uh, wearing a harness or winter coat or even a life jacket. If those of you who swim your dogs, how cute is this little life jacket right there for Mr. Mr. Puppy who's outgrown it already. And so there's two things we're going to talk about today. There's conditioning and shaping. So conditioning is growing associations, positive associations. And shaping is what I just showed you with this. She offered to turn her head. She offered to put her nose in. If I waited, she would have offered to push her face all the way through. But, you know, I was in a hurry, so I helped her. All right, so it's conditioning and it's shaping. So let's say, can you pass me that sheet for me, please? Um, no, the white one would be great. Let's say... We want to dress our dog up as a ghost for Halloween, all right? And so we would be getting a white sheet. And so let me just show you a little bit of conditioning that we're going to do with that white sheet with our dog who is going to get dressed up as a ghost for Halloween, if we can see. Okay, so sit. So get my dog to sit. Make sure that she's not afraid of it. And she's like, yeah, I'm not afraid of that. So then I'm going to... Open it up. And the first part of the conditioning for her was just this. 
pardon the pun, that's her name. Is she all right with that? Is she okay with that? And that's conditioning number one. Are we crooked? No, you're good. Just tilt down. Tilt down more? Ah, there we go. So that's conditioning number one. Are you okay with that? So if I was going to condition my dog to wear that, I might start with something like that they're familiar with. Well, this is the puppy's leash. You might not like that. But put that there. Are you okay with that? I really meant to bring one of my um, hair band bandanas out and show you that that's what I really do is I, I just hold it small, all right? And, and so that's how I got her to push through that. The, the, um, the rec spec ear protection is it's all about getting the dog to give a choice of offering a behavior. So conditioning, but conditioning is associations, shaping is connections. Connections involve the dog making a choice. So with the conditioning, they don't have to make a choice. And honestly, when you're putting on a sheet for a ghost dog, um, there isn't really a lot of choices that the dog's going to make. It's really mostly about conditioning. So I'm going to put this on if I get it right side up. Where am I, where am I going here? There you are. Okay, so I'll put... Put that on and we'll bring that up here if I can get it right. There we go. I get that right there. There we go. Oops. Pull that down a little bit more. You're standing on your ghost outfit. There we go. Good. So eye holes are a little bit too in the wrong spot, aren't they? Put those eye holes down. There he's a girl. Okay, so sit. I can't sit with a sheet on me. Sit. This, sit. Nice. Good. And we could finish the outfit. We can even grow some challenge with this outfit. Man, I think, I hope this isn't, no, it's not taters. It's got your big eye. We can take our, us was doing something. We could take our bucket, put some, Put some cookies in that if our dog's got it's your choice. <laughs> our eye holes are not staying in the right spot, young lady. There we go. Now, and we can hold. Dissy, hold. Oh my God, chaos. Good girl, thank you. So we can have a, a ghost carrying their own trick or treat with cookies inside. So good. Good job. Thank you, Dissy. Good. So conditioning first, so they're not afraid. T-E-M-P, their ears are up, their eyes, their eyes are bright, even though I kept pulling that in the wrong spot and she was like blinded at different times. Her temp stayed up. She was good. So conditioning is important. Um, there are a few behaviors that you would teach your dog that would be shaping, making connections. I like to take a funnel and teach my dog to place their face. It's a game called Place Your Face. That wherever I put it, you're gonna stick your nose through it, I'm gonna put a cookie in there. I've never done this with the pu puppy. I don't think it's really a big deal. I think most dogs are going to offer that behavior for you. So let's just see with him. I'll come over here. Let's see if we can do Place Your Face. He's never seen this before, guys. He's never seen that. Um, I'll just take his bone away because it's probably worth more money than what the cookies I have. So, cook. So he investigated it. Cook. It does. I don't really care what side he, he looks on. <laughs> cook. Cook. There we go. So if he'll push his face through, good boy. So that's how quickly you can shape acceptance. From there, we can put the nose holes in for the ghost costume. We can get our dog then to be okay with a head halter hanging over the nose. Mister, do you want to go down there and we can do some more? Good. Cook. Good boy. Search. So that was the first time he's ever seen that. But 
you saw that his ears are bright, his tail's up. He's, he's okay with that. Now, let me see if I can try him with a head halter. He has also never seen a head halter. Something that I usually shape my dogs to do right in the, the first month that I have them. But just, he's just really been, um, we've been doing a lot of other things, haven't we, buddy? So it goes like that. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I moved it up too soon. Okay, so it looks like this. Oh, man down. Here we go. That's better. You can get up in that one. Okay, so I, I take, take my um, funnel, put my head halter over it. Cook. 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 Okay, and then I can just move my my funnel out and have the head halter there. Good boy. And now I've got a dog who he's getting conditioned to the head halter. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Good. Search. Okay. So conditioning and shaping. I did a little bit of both there, didn't I? I shaped this, conditioned this at the same time. I would have taken a lot longer than that, but I, I grew a behavior while I was getting the puppy um, used to something he's never seen before. He's never seen either of them before. Okay. Um, Susan, can you address um, that you put layers in so that the dogs don't fuss with their gentle? Yes. If you are, um, if, by, by introducing it like this, you really minimize the the, the risk of dogs fighting the head halter and not liking it. So if you have a dog that doesn't like it, then you can just go back and play games, lots of games. I would say a month, six weeks of games I would do before I would actually use a head halter on my dog. So um, this he hasn't had a head halter on since she was a puppy, but, uh, and I used it with her when she was a puppy. So let's see if she would willingly, I'm doing this on live TV, and it may backfire on me. And if it does, I'm only human. I'm okay with that. Um, they are asking while you get ready there, busy. Uh, what's your treats? Um, I, I use homemade treats. So these ones, um, it's our dog's raw food. And we have, the girls have made up a recipe with mashed potatoes. And we just bake them. And then the other ones are, they're all organic. They're all like free range. They're all, you know. If you know Susie, you know she's all into good nutrition for herself and her dogs. Okay, young lady. So I'm, she hasn't seen this for years. Are you interested in putting this on your face? Thank you. And I'm going to tie it up behind. Yeah, it was all set up for you when you were a baby. Cook. So, so many dogs when they, it, it's, not, it's not actually fitted properly, but so many dogs when they see the head halter, they run, right? Thank you. Naughty pants of the naughty pants. Black Beauty doesn't want you in her shot. There. So that's it. Dog hasn't seen it. She's three years old. She hasn't had it on probably since she was 18 months old. Okay. What else do we need to work? Think of when you're putting costumes on your dogs. So we conditioned this so that now I can... I can ask my dog, will, are they okay with me putting this on their head? So, so, she, so she, she's sniffing it. I think I remember that. Yes, I can put that on my head, All right? If you just slap these things on your dog's head, they're more likely going to try and get them off immediately. One you, of the questions was, would you name that? And you might want to repeat. One, uh, I guess we had a question, would I name it? Or the name the ears. Um, I, I will name her, when she's pushing the ear thing all the way through on her own, I will give it a name, but, but right now she's only doing it part way. So you can just name something generally, like try this, everything you put on, try this, try this. You might do, for things you put on the head, it might be something and so, something you put on the leg. I show, I'll show you um, a lot of outfits, a lot of outfits are, have, you have to put your dog's leg through something. And I, what I like to do is get the dog playing that game. And so one of the things that if you watch my post on Instagram or Facebook, I had this, um, pumpkin 
suit for him. It had little leggings on. And um, what I do is I like to get them to offer me, I'll just show you, the behavior of give me your paw. So it looks like this. Come here, buddy. Sit. One. Good. And then I can put that through. That's just con conditioning that. Look, thank you. And then maybe the other one, too. Good. Put that through. Good. And take so that can out. Can you start reconditioning something like a harness when the dog doesn't like it already? Okay, question. Can we go back and start over if our dog hates the harness? You can, but it would look like, I'll just show you how, to, how it be, would begin. So let's say I want to turn thisy into a flying squirrel. Um, so I want to put this harness on her. It might look like this. So there's things that are on it. I want to make sure my dogs are okay with. So I might start doing this. Click and give a cookie. So I'll do that a few times. These are things that you're going to have to get used to. And then, can you help it please? And then I might do that and give a cookie. So the things that are on here, I want the dog to get used to. Now, if your dog is already wearing a buckle collar, that's not a problem, right? That might be a little bit much for thisy. So you can do something like this. So it's going to go on the ground. Okay, I'll just go on the ground like that. Thissy break. Good search. Good. So she, it's just any interaction she has with that. Good. Search. And if you want, if your dog was just staring at you, you could go lower. So she would. Good. So any interaction with that thing. Search. And then I might pick it up like that. Good, okay, help it up. So if you have a dog who doesn't like their harness, that might be where you go back and start. They're saying, yes, I will offer. Now, a lot of dogs don't like their harness. I'll show you in a second. Let's just put this on her. Can I put that on? Thank you. I think this, this outfit needs some wire to hold it up, hold up our wings for the flying monkey. There we go. Cook. Cook. Thank you for staying in there. So with a lot of harnesses, this is a, a, another good example. Look at the, the, the hole. They have to stick their head now. With, the, with this, I can take this off. But a lot of harnesses, you have to get the dog to offer, putting this over their head and back, back and forth. And that is what dogs don't like. I don't know if the puppy can get his head over that, but let's just see. So a general <clears throat> question, how many times and how, for, how many sessions would you condition each part of an item? How many sessions? <clears throat> uh, as little as it takes and enough until the dog shows me they're happy. So for example, I put a post on Facebook um, last week with thisy wearing leg wraps. I didn't condition those at all. I just put them on. Um, because I knew as soon as I can change her state, she's going to forget about them. It's not going to be a problem. They're really innocuous. Okay. We had lots of help in the um, comments, but uh, there's a question about what's cook mean. Cook means I'm giving you a cookie. All right. So now I'm going to pull this out. Cook. So will you put your head through a hole? <laughs> Oops, careful. Good. Cook. And I'm going to take it off. Cook. So I'm going to go to a smaller hole. That was an armpit hole. This is a, this isn't the way you would put this, this um, life jacket on anyway. Um, can we just, I know you were doing something and I interrupted you. Cook. So can I squeeze that over? Good. Cook. 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 Good boy. Right? That one would be easier for him to get in. So you can, he says, no, I'm going to go in the little one. I'm going to the little one. That is a good boy. 
Now you can pull that off because a lot of, if the harness is, you're coming over their head and they don't like it, you could condition that first by feeding them well, it's coming off, which really is just helping them to not be afraid, but we've got to get to a point where they are offering, <laughs> like this guy is. <laughs> Mister. How do you get it to the point where it's suitable for a photo shoot? Honestly, it depends on the dog. Um, the, 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 oh, so the question is, what about getting a dog ready for a photo shoot? Like, So, let, so let's just look at the, um, his little bow tie. So that little bow tie is really, or potentially really bothers dogs. They want to scratch at it. They want to get it off. So the first time that I put it on him, I gave him something that I know he would love to play with to take his mind off of it. Break. So he loves that little toy. And so he will play and play with that little toy for hours or he'll bury it because he doesn't want any of the other dogs to have it. And so it takes his mind off of that. I could also get out his flirt, his flirt pole and just get his mind off of wearing that. Now, the first time I put the bow tie on him, it, you know, I made, I conditioned the clasp. I let him sniff it. I gave him cookies for interacting with it. And I put it on him almost immediately. Um, took it off of him. Like I didn't leave it on him for any length of time. Just put it on and take it off and put it on and take it off. Susan, do you have to fight with the dog mouthing as you go in or anything? So the question is, do I have to fight with the dog mouthing? Mouthing what? Like as you go, I've been trying to work on stuff like this with my puppy, but he tries to bite everything. So if you start, if the puppy wants to bite everything, start with clarity. So if I have a puppy who I think isn't used to any of this, this is an easy one that you can do. And I think this is on my Facebook page. Can I have that? Mine? Cook. So look, what if we did this? Put, put this right on the ground and just put cookies in there. Break. Search. Good. Search. Mister, search. Okay, so now I'm going to lift that off the ground a little bit and feed him through it. Take it out and feed him through it. Good boy. Good boy. Cook. That's a good baby. Thank you. All right, so now, mister. Cook. 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 And that boy. applies to the collar, anything you. on their back. Here we go. Betty, hop up. All of that conditioning is really specific to anything you're asking. Around my little neck, around their collar, around their belly. Check in with the flying monkey. All good over there. I really think that the, the, the wings should be on wires, though. That's what I think personally. So super good, this see. Cook. So getting them off, getting them on, you know, don't just don't assume. Like a lot of people just say, oh, my dog can get over it. It's not a big deal. And they will. They'll put up with it. But they won't look like Tater Salad loves dressing up because he knows it's, it's just a shaping session where he gets lots of cookies. Like nothing could be bad about that, right? And so shaping versus conditioning. We, oh, he's off. He's got his little squeak, squeaky thing. He might be going. Do you want to take the leash? I could just call him. No, not on the cement. Okay. Yeah, that's cement floor and I don't want him sliding. So you want to condition the sight, the smell, the sound, especially if it makes, like if you put anything on a dog that jingles at Christmas, condition that for sure. And then, um, and you know, I think it's great to do things that lead us to something that's going to help it, life be better for our dogs. So things like... Um, do leading up to putting a harness on a dog leading up to putting i don't know if you have an afghan hound yay i love afghans putting a snood on their neck when they're eating so their lovely ears don't get in, in the in their food so um if you're you know this the cone ever every dog should be conditioned to wear a some whatever you're going to wear if the dog needs 
some sort of um, surgery or they have a, a, um, a plot spot they're licking that you want to stop them from licking. And so all of these things can be conditioned and you do fun photo opportunities because the dog is dressing up cute for whatever holiday it is. So we're talking about Halloween here, but can you guys see the value in this for like a photo shoot for Valentine's Day or a photo shoot for Thanksgiving or a photo shoot for Christmas? or whatever holiday that I haven't mentioned. So it isn't just about getting a dog in a costume, right? It's about, I'm gonna put on a costume that's gonna help. I know we're going into winter here in Canada, it can be really cold, and I want my dog to love wearing a winter coat. So I'm going to do some things conditioning when that, and conditioning them to wear things so that they can wear a winter coat or they can wear like a collar that, you know, when they they ha have something we don't want them to lick. So teaching simple behaviors like a, oh, we're going to go in a kennel now. Mister, come on, kennel. Oops, that could have gone very badly for you. This eat, you're a tolerant baby. <laughs> you're such a good girl. Maybe give him his bone. So I don't know if you guys saw that on the camera. He just jumped right on this. He, such a good girl, little one. Mister. That's pretty good for a 17 week old baby. All right. So all of it is leading to where you want to go for the way your dogs live their lives, right? Do they wear winter coats? Do they have to wear winter boots? My dogs, I've tried winter boots. They just, because of the wet snow, I don't know why. I just can't get them to stay on my dog's feet. However, I, that takes a lot of conditioning. Putting leg wraps on a dog for fly ball like I do, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother conditioning that with most dogs, unless the dog was really leery about everything. With most dogs, I really don't. You put them on, you play a game of tug, and they forget they're on. But boots are different. So what it is that is going to be functional, can we shape costume wearing through the year that's going to help the dog. Fetty, you can't bury it, bury it in a plastic kennel. Um, that's going to help our dogs um, love things. Okay, I think it's time for the our other guest star. All right, um, so. We will take him out and we will, this guy just loves getting dressed up. I'm going to put the camera on so you can't see who's coming in. All right. But I bet you if I showed you the imprint of his um, Halloween costume that he would, you can release him. Can you help it up? Help it up, please. Tater. I brought the, ruined the surprise. The puppy has a bone, he said. I asked you to do something. Happy tap. Hup it. Let's try that again. Tater, come here. Oh my gosh. He's like, there's Christmas, there's, there's uh, candies over there. There's dog candies. Come here. Good boy. Thank you. Okay, happy tap. That's what I'm looking for. A little bit more willing. All right, so let's see this. Let's see what that looks like. All right, just wait. Here, it's coming in. It's coming in. Here. Good. Boo. Oh, boo. Now, tater salad doesn't have any lovely ear holes. I don't know, Chelsea, how you got the eye holes where you did. <laughs> okay. Oh, you... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Good boy. Okay, mystery guest number three is, of course, tater salad because he was naughty and he wouldn't go right to his spot. But if you knew you were doing dress up, you would have, wouldn't you? Yeah, search. Good boy. What a kook. Okay, any questions that I haven't covered? We've got what are the behaviors that we want to teach? So I like teaching a chin rest. I like teaching, um, I teach, um, number one, 
is to lift one paw. Number two is to lift another. This E, come here. Sit. Can you help it? Sit. One. Good. Two. Good. So that's just if you're, it's easier to manipulate a dog if, if, if you have them instead of just say paw. Now you can teach it more subtly just by putting out your right hand if you want one paw and your left if you want the other. For example, I'm pretty sure, sit, sit, sit. Good, good. So she knows without me saying one or two that by using my right hand or my left hand, what she wants. All right, so those are the, the, the chin rest, the it's your choice, the hold, the, um, the, uh, um, the, can you help it up? Place your face with the, with the funnel. Those are things that will help be your dog to want to put things on. But then the other part, so that's the training. The other part is the conditioning. So everything you're going to try new, lots of conditioning, unless it's something you know the dog's used to. So for example, um, putting on a collar, if I, you know, if this was something I was going to put on a tater, I wouldn't have to go through like that because he's worn a collar so very, very much. Okay. This sounds like a new person to your programs. Okay. Uh, what about obesity from all of these treats? I have a large breed and I'm using her meals as training. Okay. That's great. I use my, you can use your dog's meals as training. The puppy, um, probably, I don't know. 30 to 40% of his food, he gets um, just given to him, and the rest I use for training. And as I said, um, the treats that I use, we the vast majority, we do use, um, what are the cocoa, cocoa therapy ones? Um, we do use some packaged uh, treats, but not very many, really, very, very few. So we make a lot of our, we make, when I say we, I don't make any of them, but you know, I would, because I want my dogs to have really, really good nutrition. So... Not a big deal. Uh, there's another question. I'm sure your team will jump on it too. As I don't suppose there are resources for shaping these behaviors for those of us who aren't quite as creative. Uh, shaping behaviors. You know what, guys? You could um, send my team a note at wag at dogsat.com if you're interested in joining one of our online programs. Uh, homeschool the dog is one that a lot of people have success as a start out. I believe that retails at $300, but because you're watching this live, if you send my team a note um, and say, Susan said, um, Susan said, put that as your subject line, Susan said, dot, 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 and um, we will give you a lovely discount code so you can have that for $49. So, but if you say, Susan, I, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't have any money then go to our, well, you're on YouTube. You're watching this on YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube, if you've seen a snip of it somewhere else, then go to my YouTube channel and there are playlists. Oh my gosh, you could get such an education from the playlist that we have for 100% free on YouTube. That's why, I mean, I, that's why I just uh, am so appreciative of all you people who have subscribed to our YouTube channel because it inspires me to want to put out more and more free content for everybody um, who can enjoy enjoy having a great relationship with their dog, regardless of a paywall um, being there or not. Now, we have thousands and thousands of students in our online programs. Um, they love the coaching they get from us and the community of like-minded people working together. So you might want to try homeschool the dog. You might want to say, yes, this makes sense. I want my dogs to love working with me. I want to see their ears up. I want that great temp. Then start with, with one of our programs. Homeschool the dog would be a great place to start. But if you, you know, I've, I've, I don't know who this crazy Aunt Susan is. I've never seen her before. Well, maybe, you know, get to know myself and my team a little bit more by going through some of the playlists. A great one to start is podcast 241. In there, I give a step-by-step -step protocol on how to help your, the dogs who love screaming when the doorbell rings or charging at the door when somebody comes over or somebody knocks on the door. They go crazy. I can, I can probably get tater, or tater salad. Hello? Good boy. So that used to be a real trigger for tater, and um, you know we, we just work, work away at that. All right. 
Any other questions for me? I'm just going to skip down through here. I'm going to take a little sip of my coffee that's been sitting here. Um, Huh? I think they want the subject line to say, Susan said. Mm. Okay. Subject line, if you're interested in Wag Nation, Susan said, boo. All right? So if you, Tater said, boo, if you're interested. Uh, can we all just move in with me? I'd have to get a bigger place, but that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, so this is a good question, having experienced your puppy and raw feeding. How do you train these little behaviors with raw food? How do I train with raw food? Um, I just get creative in how I deliver the raw food. So depending on where I'm training, if I'm training on carpet, I don't want any raw food on my carpet. So it's unlikely I would ever train on carpet, but I do, and I have. And so what I do is I have three bowls, a big bowl for the raw food, a tiny little, you know, a coffee stirring kind of um, a spoon, and then two lower dishes, and I just, fill the dishes and I, you know, get the behavior and give the, and re reinforce with, with a dish. I will also reinforce with the spoon if I'm training somewhere where I don't care what's going to happen. Um, I also have, ha, do you guys know what I mean by the, um, when you go, um, when you travel and you have those little travel size, um, what are those, what's that material? Rubber. It's not rubber. It's, uh, not latex, but anyway, that you have your shampoo and your cream rinse and everything in. Well, I started off experimenting with raw food squeezing out of that, which works great, but it's hard to clean. You can buy plastic bottles. I think I might invent my own. That is like toothpaste. Silicone. That's the word, Krista Hill. Thank you. And just will. Thank you. Yes. And look at Kelly and Elaine. Thank you. So, but the, the, they should be silicone, the, the ones that I'm using. So if I'm walking the field with a puppy, I will load up my raw food in a feeding tube and it's like toothpaste. toothpaste. I walk along, I want to say, you know, he's, he's in, heel, in, in uh, reinforcement zone, I'll say cook and squirt a little bit in there and then keep walking. All right, so you can dehydrate your food in a dehydrator if you want. Um, any special for Henley 360, Jose, if you wait for a couple of months or no, a couple of weeks, maybe, uh, check in on at, um, at, uh, the cyber event, cyber event weekend. There's a little foreshadowing for you. We are going to have, uh, our, our, our agility programs available. Well, I'm not giving everything away. Cyber event, check us out. On Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I don't know the dates, but it's November, isn't it? Yeah, because that's U.S. Thanksgiving. Okay, um, any other questions before we sign off? Two. Uh, can Two you questions. share with us what the bone that profits eating? Oh, the bone. I really can't. It's a secret. Um, shame I talk. It is called a, a no-hide. You might have to text Kim and ask her what it really is. I believe it's plant-based and um, I just don't like feeding raw hides to my dogs. There's just too many chemicals and the way they're processed and um, for a lot of reasons. But these are very, very different. And if anybody's watching and actually knows what they are, they can write it in the comments. But I just know that Kim does the research here and she finds these great products and then we use them. Yeah, no hides. Okay. Uh, Shamim, what material are the no hides made out of? Uh, no, they're not chicken. Speaking of vegan, what's your view on the wild earth? I'm not sure what wild earth is. Uh, we have a question about... What's earth animal? Working the dog. Collagen? Oh, yes. Uh, that is not very food oriented. You'll have to... Uh, a question on working with a dog who's not food oriented. So I have an acronym. If you've watched or listened to any of my podcasts, the acronym is DASH, D-A-S-H. And so the first thing, the first piece of training that we do with any dog is get the dog's D, their desire to work. And so 
If you're a dog who's not fussed on food, then your first, you start at creating drive for food. And we have a lot of resources in our online programs that can help you with that. But if you do a search for our, our um, in Shape by Dog, on our Shape by Dog website, then you'll be able to find D-A-S-H. You'll find a lot of information on that. Oh, venison, no hides? Okay, there you go. Um, okay, if you have any questions about anything, I'm going to sign off. But what I would love for you guys to do, here's what happens. When we shut down this live, all of your great comments go away. And so people are going to be watching a replay of this live and I would have, I have said some of the questions but I would love for you to stay on come back to YouTube give us a thumbs up leave a comment on this live whether you thought it was worthwhile whether you would like to see more uh, lives like this and what topics you would like to say so come on back when I close out come on back to this to this YouTube podcast or YouTube uh, live and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. How you, what you thought of the live, whether it was informative, whether you're gonna start conditioning and shaping your dog, and what's the next topic I can help you with. And remember, those of you who say, I, I want more, Susan, I would like to learn more about how to be a student of yours, then send my team a note at wagatdogsat.com, subject line, Susan said, what did I say? Susan said, boo. Susan said, boo. Also, check out podcast episode 241. It got released today. You can either listen to it or you can watch it here on YouTube as well. Thank you guys. You're amazing. Thank you for to each and every one of you 102,000 people who have subscribed to our channel on our way to 1 million. I know we're going to get there. Thank you. We'll see you next time.